All right, I'm gonna try this again because I tried to make a video of this damn thing and then I got all interrupted. I had two, three phone calls talking about some other business I had at hand with a family member. I, 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 anyway, here's the deal. I said I thought this, I estimated this mower to be between six and seven hundred dollars. No. That's what I said. I said it was probably six to seven hundred dollars. No. Remember, I said, guys, if you know, ask, you know, I, I asked you guys out there. I think someone did come in and said, did he say six ninety nine or did he say six hundred? I think he said six hundred. I said because I had the electric star, it was probably going to be like a seven hundred dollar mower. Well, here's what we got. I found out the receipt was in with the manuals. I got all the manuals. If you can make that out, that's how much the mower was. Right there, six forty nine ninety five, six fifty. Then you add. NJ sales tax, which I don't know what the percentage was in the 07. I think it was still 7% back then. I think that's right around when I raised it on Corazon. I think he's the one that did raise it from 6 to 7. And then it went back to 6.75. It's 6.75 now. I forget that. In places like New Brunswick, it's 3.5%. In places like Trenton, I also believe it's 3.5% because I know when I got the Rhino liner on that, I got a um, urban renewal initiative tax um, you know, break for having that done in Trenton versus if I would have gotten it done in another town that was not Trenton not a city like that but anyway it came out to 45 49 tax so total was 695 44 so I was right in between what I had said I thought it was. I said it was probably, didn't I say it was between probably between six and seven hundred dollars new, this mower? Okay, a couple other things I want to mention about it. Well, first let me show the manuals. It came with all the manuals and one of the spare belts. There's two, it, it, it uses two belts, but it came with one of them. That's the one for the back. This uses a snowblower-like system. All right, you'll see what I mean by that in just a sec. It's got a friction plate and friction disc. You see it? This belt from the gearbox to this pulley turns that shaft, which turns this wheel, which turns that plate, which turns the transmission, or vice versa. <laughs> Anyway, the faster, yeah, no, nah, no, nah. and then and this, the closer to the center it is, the slower it goes, the further the outside it is, the faster it goes. Just like a snowblower. There is no reverse. The side of it would have been reverse. There is no reverse. You have three, they say, I think it, in the manual it's three speed. One, two, three. That's one, two, three. It's really infinite, so it's wherever you want uh, in there. I think that's why they say easy speed up here. But it's got a cup holder and it also has a key start. I got the key start to work. It didn't even need a new battery. Go figure, right? It didn't even need a new battery. Um, but when you go to start it, what it is with these um, systems, because I noticed it on that pressure washer I have, too. Um, oh, yeah, and then there's another belt. There's this belt, a cog. See how it's got notches in it, so it's cogged. That one goes from the pulley under the motor to under this plate. This plate turns. That turns this wheel, this wheel turns this belt, and that makes the transmission go. When this is moving, that's moving, see? It's in gear, see? It's turning it, that's how it works. So, in a lot of ways, like a snowblower, the only difference um, on a snowblower, yeah, it's basically the same thing, um, except it's only one belt on a snowblower. Well, I'm, like for instance, my older snowblower, that one, it's one belt go 
goes from the engine. And, you know, you're talking about a horizontal motor now, so you flip it this way. So say this is the shaft, right? This way, the belt comes down onto a bigger pulley. Then on that pulley, usually, behind that pulley is that metal plate like that. And then on the dash, you have the handle. That handle, when you let go of it, on that old one, or if you push it down, one of the two ways, depending on what machine it is, lets that plate closer to the wheel, because the wheels on one of them shafts going across, and you have the gear selector up here, and that rubber disc is going across, and when you let that handle down, that plate is brought closer to that rubber disc, and it makes contact, and then it starts moving. The engine powers it via the belt. That turns the metal plate, and then when the rubber makes contact with the rubber plate, which is turning, that turns the drive, you know, the axle, because there's a chain on the sprocket. It comes down, and that's your drive, and that's how you get movement. Now, the only difference on a snowblower is you have reverse. See, so we had to come up this way and we'll go to the other side of the plate for a reverse. So that's the system. On a snowblower, it's one belt, not two. They had this transferring a belt from this metal plate to the rubber wheel to another belt to the transmission. This can even be filled up with grease. But this system has been around on these snappers for a very, very, very long time. I had one. I know I had, I had I've had one that was as old as um, it had to have been a um, early 70s model, I believe, probably early mid 70s. It was definitely old. It had the white engine. It was a three and a half horse, but that system's been around a very long time, and it's still around. So these are good snappers. All right, they also make a, a, a crappy snapper. Those ones are made by MTD. Briggs contracted with MTD to make a snapper. That's just like one of those Troy Belt push mowers, except it's a snapper. It's an MTD. They're junk. This is a real deal one. A couple other things to note. It's got a cup holder. This thing is so heavy and sturdy that it will hold a cup without spilling much, especially, you know, use a sealed cup. But then you've got the electric start, like I was saying, that option. You don't get that often. But the only thing is with these electric starts on these mowers, they're kind of weak and finicky. They always were, even on my pressure washer, I noticed it. The bigger the battery, the more bang you get. So, I couldn't get it going the first time. And it was just barely cranking over. And or this brand new battery, it's smaller. I did get it to go on this, and then I checked the voltage on that battery. It was the same as that battery, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, why isn't it working then? So finally I got it to go. So here, put the bag back on. And also now I have this spare bag that came off another one I had. This one might be a little bit nicer shaped than that one, or vice versa. I think this this one's actually the one that goes with that. That was the other one. This one's in better shape as far as the, the um, wear on it. There isn't any right here, but it got faded from the sun. This one is nicer as far as the color and the, where the logo is. And I know on the old one I had, it had the white bag. This back here was hard. hard. It was thicker. So this is called a snapper riser. And come to think of it, I also have the thatcher riser. I think the, so this thing does something that gets sucks up leaves or something. So I got that thing to go with it. I've got I do, I have the thing that hooks to the front of this axle. It's a thing to Dethatch the grass I forgot to grab. And I have a side discharge chute. I think back there. Alright. 
So that's three. The only one I don't have then would be the mulch plug. The one to plug it up completely, which would probably go this way. And actually at one point, I think I did have that too. Goes in here. That would have been all three um, components. It has, I have the Thatcherizer still at the garage and then the side discharge chute, I think is over there. So I gotta see if I have, it's a plug that goes in there. If I have that, I got everything for it. So. Um, with everything, I don't know, like I said, I've seen things selling a lot cheaper and we have, we have had a drought, but the grass still has grown to an extent. More like this with everything. I would expect like 350. Which would be what? Half half retail? And it's got a good powerful engine. The most powerful one that was available with the electric start. It's basically a quantum, but it's an overhead valve. It even has a side breather cover, which I don't get that. Why would it need that? That was for, back in the day, for the flatheads to access the valves. The end of the valves would have been in here. They're, they're, not, they're not in here. They're up here now. So that's, uh, I thought that was pretty interesting because on the newer OHVs, you're not gonna find a breather, a side breather cover on them because there would be no reason it's up here now. It's all up here. This was a good one. Okay, 07, 12, 10. So, more than likely, uh, 2007, December 10th, or November, what, October 12th, one or the other, which means he probably bought it in early 08 then, for the spring of 08. Uh, one other thing I want to know, it was the heaviest mower I ever had to lift out of the, out of the truck. Heaviest push mower I ever had to lift out of that truck. The thing weighs about, it's, it's really heavy. It's got to be like 300 pounds. By far heaviest one I ever had to lift. So that was the other thing I wanted to know. Uh, so the other question is now, you know, I washed it pretty good. So I try to get some of this overspray that's on and off. Somebody evidently painted near it. And then some of this red that's missing to like touch it up. At least this area here where it says high back. Try to make it a little bit nicer. Maybe. Or do I just leave it alone? I know a guy who sells mowers. As is, doesn't doesn't mess with the, the paint. I, I was always not big on doing it that way, but I could. I could probably do it and get away with it. I don't know. We'll see. Just looking in there. See, yeah, see. Alright, let's give it a try real quick. Engine operators now. That's good to have for this engine. I don't think I have this one. See, they call they start calling these Intex, but this is this was a good OHV. The actual engine had uh, mower manual, and then one of the that one of the belts, and this thing that was printed in '93 when it was still the actual Snapper Company. Rigs just reprinted. Okay. So and it has a man. Let's see if the key started working. And the charger. And the charger. Normally you don't also get that too. So that's usually missing. That's the one thing that's always usually missing. So that in there. So 
cleans up nice enough. Mechanically, it's perfect, pretty much. I mean, the blades are already sharp. The oil was good, everything. Mechanically, it's good. The only thing I don't like is you have to remember to prime it first. So, one, two, three, four, five. And then this is where you gotta make sure this is up. And then here we go. There we go. And it's got a throttle. And it charges it up as it works, which most of them didn't have that, too. So, that's a good mower. So, I just wanted to share that my estimate on the price was dead on. Because I think I said between six and seven hundred, or I said between six ninety nine and seven ninety nine. Either way, I hit it pretty much right on the head. I'm good at that. You know, I'm good at being able to take a look at something and say, this is probably about how much it would have been new and what it's worth used. See, these are plastic. <sighs> these are also, I believe, plastic. Yep. These, these they used to make it out of metal. I think it would have been even heavier. Weighs, it literally it weighs a ton. It really does. It's, heavy. it's really heavy. So, I'm going to go look for those extra pieces now. Get the Thatcherizer for it. It's probably from washing. Yeah, it's from washing it. Great mower, though. I just wish... I'm going to try to see about getting that out a little bit. Maybe. maybe. I think I have some red. Maybe just kind of... And that's it. Should be good to go. All right.